All right, welcome back. Uh, jumping straight on into things here. Uh, first step of the tail cone is going to involve making a, uh, a tie down, a tie down attachment. So uh, they're calling it the tie down bar, uh, but it's going to be a really fun one to do. Taking this piece of material here, uh, going to be trimming down sides, yeah, so width, lengthwise, um, making a couple of cuts, and then also tapping it. So it's going to be really fun to do. Uh, so we're going to jump right on into things here. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention really quickly that you're about to see probably on time lapse form or video form, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this next section here, but you're gonna see that circular saw being used for the first time. Um, and I made a pretty pretty interesting discovery. I'm gonna quickly jump into this here. I don't wanna to get too, too chatty with you, um, but it's really unique. So um, like I mentioned in the previous video, did a whole lot of work on the inside of the house. Some of that work involved uh, doing tile work. Uh, part of the tile system that I, that I installed, I used uh, Schluter, uh, aluminum Schluter like edge profiles uh, for around like the, the niche in the shower. Um, anyways, along edges of, of the shower, I'm sure you've seen it in public restrooms or any other. Um, any the way to tile. cut it that I found um, some tile guys online uh, mentioning is using a, a saw that's meant for aluminum. Um, so it's, I think it was like 40 bucks or, or so at Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, but it works really well for aluminum and uh, it also works really well for these parts here. So just uh, just now off camera, I want to do a really quick cut to see how well it works. Um, and it works really well. These parts, like I've mentioned in previous videos, they don't always come 100% square. Um, so I just made a squared up cut and just took a tiny little piece of material off, uh, just enough to go past the, uh, the width of the blade. And uh, this is your cut here. And it cut through like butter. You go really real slow. Um, so it doesn't grab or anything, but man, it worked really well. So anyways, you're gonna see that. Um, that's why you're gonna see more of this going forward with like basic standard cuts uh, versus using the bandsaw. It would have been a little bit wigglier. I could always profile things down afterwards on a scotch brett wheel, uh, but this makes really quick work of making squared off cuts. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna shut up now. We'll get to, to work in here. Fun little part here. Um, this step involves uh, using brute force to straighten something. Um, no, so this step involves, uh, you'll see in this picture here, uh, it talks about these pieces here which come from vans, uh, from whatever tooling they're using, and whatever they do to make the part, it comes with quite a hook to it. So you'll see in this shot here, hopefully you'll see that bend, that, that, that curve to the left hand side there. Um, anyways, we have to get that, uh, that out of Alrighty, just finished up beating the crap out of these things, uh, but got them straight. Uh, hopefully I got a good shot of that hitting these with a hammer, um, but got them nice and straight. Um, definitely within that 16th of an inch tolerance that Vans recommends or that calls for. Uh, and then also took these edges and uh, made them nice and pretty. Used a file, followed up with uh, the Scott's Bright wheel and then Scott's Bright itself, especially here. Um, if I was to do this again, I'd probably leave that blue protective material on one side wherever you're going to be hitting it with a hammer. Nothing major, uh, but just left little scuff marks Anyways, that I didn't like. Hit so. that real quick with Scotch-Brite. I'll prime it uh, whenever we go to, to assemble. Um, but ready to move forward. Alrighty, so working on this, uh, this bulkhead here. Um, got to this section of cleat going on, those two pieces there. I did actually go ahead and um, final size them. A lot, a lot of this kit here already comes final size, uh, but I couldn't get a rivet to, to push through on any of the holes there. So went ahead and uh, final size all those holes there. Next step moving on is putting this piece of J-channel previously cut down uh, from a long six foot piece of it. Um, anyways, getting ready to set this here as a stiffener. Uh, one thing that I'm doing to make my life a little bit easier is uh, when Vans calls out where to place it, they're looking for quarter inch uh, center of the hole to the top of the J-channel. So I drew a line there, 
drew a center line uh, that way I can get this all centered but they say to use a clamp um, and then go ahead and drill it then start click going and, uh, and send those holes through it but I don't know how I'd fit a and sorry if I can't get this in frame here anyways um, not sure how I'd get a clamp to, to sit in here so to make my life easier drew out a line there of, of what all I need to have just gonna hold it uh, just with uh, my immense human strength and I'll match drill one hole and then I'll be able to get a Clico on it and then uh, continue down the way there but at least these lines will help to um, reline it up as I get that second hole lined in uh, so we'll get to it Um, to do those 45 degree angles. Um, so now next step involves deburring them uh, before we start actually making the whole assembly here. You'll notice the uh, blue protective film was left on one side. Bands calls for leaving it on one side. It says it makes it easier to get in and out of there. Um, so left it on one side. Deburring, I'm trying to not disturb the plastic material too much, um, but so yeah, real quick, as far as deburring goes, uh, normally this, these long sections would be really uh, a pain to do. Um, either trying to do it on the scotch wheel there and running uh, side to side. Uh, but picked up this, well, I'm not sure if I uh, have shown this in previous videos or not, but it makes it so easy. It has a two inch uh, scotch brett wheel from Cleveland Aircraft Tools. Uh, when you first get it, it's really hard to handle um, until it gets grooves in it. It kind of wants to walk all over, uh, but I've really tried to make an effort to wear in certain spots as I'm using it in more controlled areas which makes it super easy when it comes to these really long portions because it kind of just sits in that groove, lock and load, good to go uh, all the way across it. Um, so I'll show you really quickly here. Um, you'll see, I'll try to show it before and after, uh, but this edge here does have a really nice lip on the side of it uh, where it has that, that, that really big burr. Hopefully that's on, on film there. Not sure if you can hear that or not, but it has a really nasty burr on the edge there. And that goes all the way along the entire section of it. Um, so, I'll show you, it is awesome having this tool here. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Uh, yeah, so it literally allows you just to find a, a groove that you want to go with and go from there. has that nasty burr on it. Nothing on there, smooth all the way across. Uh, so it makes it super easy to do. Alrighty, so next step in the process here is to draw a line 5 sixteenths of an inch uh, from the edge as well as a line at the uh, at each end 3 sixteenths of an inch in. Uh, so these two I did it, um, I basically laid these out by hand. I just took measurements every uh, couple of feet, measured in, five sixteenths of an inch and then connected the dots along the way, realizing that that would take way too long and probably be um, a lot of margin for error on these long ones, running big, long, wrong stretches. Anyways, didn't want to cause any issues with uh, with having any of my lines crooked and also just didn't want to have to draw a line across the whole nine foot or eight foot section, however long it is. Um, anyways, to make my life easier, really quickly, I went ahead and made this little device, which uh, helps to, to offset that 
offset that line really easily. Just drill a hole um, that fits the Sharpie perfectly. And so this fits right inside of there. Uh, I can put a little bit of downward pressure on it. And as I run it along the side of the uh, metal piece, it leaves a nice little, little line. Uh, so I'll show you real quick what it looks like. Uh, but man, this makes things super, super simple. And there you are. Got a line all the way across. And then just to check it, I'll probably do this the first, first couple of pieces that I do. Uh, but just to check it, get my handy dandy ruler and give it a random measurement here. And we are exactly 5 16 7 inch. Um, so that makes things super, super simple. Uh, so anyone out there who's also doing this, uh, make them one of these jigs up real quick and it will uh, make your life easier. Alrighty, so we're up to, should have gotten this ready earlier. All right, so we're up to page 10-6, step number two, which involves bending these alondrons here. I already have them notched out uh, where it called for it, uh, which you'll see here. And then this one actually already completed. So these come from the factory perfectly straight, probably hard to tell on camera, uh, but basically you measure in a certain distance, put it in a vise, and smack it over and over again with a rubber mallet or what I'll get to next year. And I'll show you. Um, but anyways, smack it until it uh, lines up with the skin. So you'll see the skin has this bend to it right there, which is probably hard to, hard to tell on camera. Uh, but if this piece of angle aluminum here was straight, it would be uh, over off of this direction here. Anyways, I have one more to do. I'm going to throw that in the vise and do that right now for you on camera. So I'm not sure if this is all going to get in view here, uh, but summed up using these uh, soft jaws here to not mar the aluminum. And Vans calls for in the instru instructions to use a rubber mallet. Tried using it. Um, I understand why. I think it's that way you don't heavily mar the material here. But I have gotten away with using a small sledgehammer here uh, with the little piece of that uh, heavy duty gorilla duct tape. Um, this works well. The other piece did not have any big dents, didn't have any kind of blemishes on the face or anything like that. So uh, I've gotten away with this. It's, it seems to be quicker moving than smacking it over and over and over again with a rubber mallet. Uh, but the way they call for you to do this is to line it up, which you'll see here on your mark that you make. So this mark here was already already, already marked there. Anyways, line it up with your mark. And it says to preload the material and whack it. Uh, so I'll show you real quick here. Literally just preloading a little bit on the material here on my side. in here I'm um, up to this step here which involves uh, taking this F1011 a bulkhead part as well as this bottom skin piece here and getting it into the bottom of the tail cone and the most aft section of it and finding a lot of issues here so this is that F011 bulkhead part um, this one here but you'll see when you go to line this and by the way look at that sunset that is beautiful anyways uh, when you go to line this up here I'm not getting the Clecos to line up right. Uh, just to test fit it, I took that F011 part off and I went ahead and Clecoed just this bottom skin uh, to this skin here and all of this lined up perfectly. So I know it's the bulkhead. Uh, so I was looking online, it looks like this is a kind of a known issue. Uh, but if you see, if you look through there, uh, this this bulkhead here should have a nice radius along, uh, along that section there, but it is actually really squared off. Uh, it's not 100% curved there, um, probably hard to tell on camera, uh, but especially this, there and there, you'll see those are really just flat sections, and I think what that's doing is instead of following that curve of the skin, it's lifting it up away. So then when I go to Clico here, I'm having a lot of resistance and I really don't want to bend it, uh, but you'll see it's a lot of these holes here are not lining up right. I'm having to use a, uh, Anyways, having to put this in here and line it up, but I'm getting a lot of resistance on it and I really don't want to have a whole bunch of resistance. So, 
I'm gonna go ahead and remove that bulkhead there. And then what I'm gonna try to do is either bend those corners, see if I can get any kind of a, a radius there or hit it on the uh, Scotch Bright wheel and force a radius onto it. Uh, so I'm gonna do that real quick and I'll uh, come back and I'll show you how it worked. Alrighty, so that worked way better than expected. Um, you'll see here now these angles have far less, uh, less of a gap there. Yeah, previously used some uh, crescent wrench to uh, bend the back side of the tab, but then realized that the front end uh, was not bending to match just because it has that, that hard bend in it from when they bend these uh, bulkheads. So anyways, um, scotch brat wheel, being real careful not to go too far into it and make any kind of a knife edge. So just really just lightly hitting each of those corners worked amazingly well. Um, you'll see they look like they're lined up far better than before. And then the Clecos went in without really any kind of a fuss. Um, so that's really good to know, especially when it comes to getting this thing riveted later after uh, dimpling and everything that we're not going to have uh, or shouldn't have issues with trying to force things um, that don't want to go together. Uh, so anyways, that looked that worked really well. So I'm going to go ahead and get this back piece put on here and then we'll move to the uh, next step. Alrighty, well hopefully I got a good time lapse over there. Um, nothing really too eventful other than I uh, continued basically what I did on the right skin here with the stiffeners. Um, basically did the same exact process on the left side here. So I'll show you real quickly what that means. So yeah, got the stiffeners put on here. Um, got them fully mastered drilled all the way down the way there. You'll see I am running out of Clecos. I have a couple hundred more coming from Cleveland Aircraft Tools pretty soon here. It amazes me. I'm actually pretty surprised um, that the bare minimum, I think they'd recommended like 300 and something, or at least on the website it seemed like. And I'm up to, I think this here is 500 Clecos in total. Um, so ordering another 200, so I'll have 700 in total, uh, just so I can keep moving. I really don't want to, get rid of too many Clecos, especially while this is here on any kind of a sawhorse where this is having um, the, a load there and a load here. I just don't want any of this to twist or turn or do anything. Uh, so ordered some more Clecos. Um, so I'm gonna put a pause here on the video here. Next step will involve uh, jumping forward to the rudder uh, stop skin stiffener. And uh, yeah, so a couple pieces there for the rudder and then uh, we'll keep moving forward along with the build. So yeah, if there's one key takeaway, I mean, this is very straightforward. That's why I didn't do any super in-depth video. Uh, but if there's one key takeaway, something I would do differently next time, or if, if I did this again here, is instead of trying to hold it up, I'd pre I don't know why I was doing this, but I was originally trying to hold up each of these stiffeners where I wanted it exactly, lining up the little cross, uh, cross mark there and then drilling it that way and starting from there moving there. Anyways, instead of trying to hold that and drill from this side here, matching that, just pull it out to the side, drill the hole first, bring it over, put a Clico, and then continue from there. Um, I don't know why, I'm not sure if I got that on my time lapse or not, but you probably saw me fighting it early on until I realized just drill the hole first in the open air over here, then bring it over, Clico it, and go from there. Don't try to hold it here, because uh, it's gonna accomplish the same thing. So anyways, that's probably my big takeaway. Probably pretty obvious to most of you out there. Not sure why I didn't think of that at the time. So anyways, made it this far. Thanks so much for watching. Um, see you in the next one. Adios.